can you not hear me let me know if you can hear me just say yes i can hear you yes 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 just comment yes people saying tobe stop hiding i'm not hiding i'm about um i'm just making sure that this fucking sound works can you hear me put put in the comments if you can hear me please because i don't know what the fuck is going on with um with my laptop just moving mad can you not hear me just it's a simple question yes no can you hear me just put yes in the comments okay cool um just waiting on jordan but i'll start now man i'll start now um sorry i'm just responding to some whatsapps i'm not a happy guy at all today you probably have seen it from my tweets from my uh insta story i'm not a happy man i've ripped up those tickets i mean that ticket as well like it's just it's just this this team they're just the worst man they're, they're just a horrible 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 team to play i had big steve we were talking in a chat and he said how could you leave before half time oh you backed the team with this this uh, and to be honest i'm fed up man the whole point of me being there is because i backed the team the whole point of me being at this game is because i backed this team I paid three times the price that you were meant to pay for a way for a way ticket, and I and I would have paid six times the price if you were keeping up my tweets over the course of the week, despite knowing that we weren't going to win. Every single preview I did, I didn't put down Spurs to win because I didn't believe we were going to win this game. I knew we were going to lose, but because you don't want to come off in almost before the game starts, I was like, okay, you know what? Let's go for a draw. Nuno's Jamie Arteta don't really coach attack. But let's go for a draw, but bruv, like, I, I I challenge I challenge most people who are watching this to go to that game, yeah, go to that game, go through all that trouble and see that performance in the first half and be like, yeah, I'm going to stay. I'm going to stay. Bruv, it's what... Why would you? Why would you stay? Why would you stay for that rubbish? Why would you stay for that bullshit, bro? I've never left a game before half time in my life. In my life. Yeah. Even back the days when, ah, you, like, I've seen this team take three at West Ham. I've seen this team take five at, at home to Liverpool. I've seen this team take three away to Palace. I've seen this team take three away to Stoke. Oh my God, I've seen the, the beatings that I've travelled to to see from this team. I've seen them take beatings all over the country and even internationally as well. I've seen this team take beatings, but that performance today in the first half, that is a gut-wrenching performance, bro. Because you being in a North London derby as well, like just ask anyone who went to the match, like whether you're a Spurs or Arsenal fan, you get goosebumps, you feel the excitement. And like you are going there and you're bringing your best, you're bringing some sort of optimism, you're trying to bring some sort of energy. And when you see the team play that way, you're lit you've got nothing to feed off. You've got no encouragement that this is going to get better because it was terrible terrible and that's two consecutive years on the truck now where this team have gone there and put in last year i did a preview saying gutless performance i remember it gutless performance we lost 2-1 it's not my youtube and this season they've just only gone and they've topped it with the majority of the players being the same players only it's a different manager it's just they're just a shocking team, a shocking outfit, uninspired, uninspiring manager. I've said it. He's got his, he's got his benefits. He's good at certain things, and for what he's done in England, he's he, he can hold his head up high in terms of what he did at Wolves. But it was clear what Tottenham needed. We needed a different type of manager to Jose Mourinho, a different type of manager to Nuno, especially when you're not going to improve this team. And what did they do? Everyone read from whoever. Whoever's got the athletic or evening stand or whatever, Fonseca just recently did an interview 
Not saying I even wanted Fonseca. I didn't even want Fonseca, but he he gave an insight into what's going on at this club. All summer we were hearing that bullshit about attacking football, Tottenham way, Tottenham DNA, all of that rubbish, all of that stupid fucking cliche bullshit that we hear from that stupid chairman. Well, he's not stupid, I guess, but that chairman and this club, they just peddle rubbish. Every single day, they're peddling rubbish. They're telling us one thing, and yet their actions tell us another thing. You say all of this stuff, and then you bring in Nuno. But I'm not even just going to focus on him today. Like, he's one part. It's the players. It's just everything. The, the whole thing is a mess. Like, they say they say it's insanity. They say it's insanity to keep to one second. Yeah. Do you, do, do you have to? Fucking hell, man. <laughs> yeah, bro. <laughs> At least that made me smile. They say... They say it's, it, it, it's insanity to keep doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results. What the fuck are these 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 lot expecting? You keep doing the same bullshit over and over again. You keep retaining faith in the same place. You keep acting the same way in the transfer window. You keep hiring the, these managers that go against your, your your values, and yet and yet you're you're shocked when this team's finishing outside of the top four, finishing outside of the top six. Not winning, winning a thing. It makes no sense to me. That it, it doesn't make any sense. <laughs> How can you say you want to be one thing, and then your actions just say tell you another thing? Fonseca, Fonseca I'm not sure if you read the interview, but Fonseca said that he wanted to come in and play attacking football. Mm -hmm. He said he wanted. To, I don't know whether I believe him or not, but I believe that Paratici, Par Paratici had. A certain profile of manager that we went for. You could see it in the names. Gattuso, yeah. Con obviously, Conte is the outlier because he's just elite. But you could see it in the type of managers that he was going for the names Gattuso and Nuno. The fuck? What the hell? I haven't got the energy to speak on it anymore, bro. Bro, Jokes. it's just, yeah. But that, anyway, that, I just wanted to rant about why I left so early. But let's actually focus on this game. I've been talking for seven and seven minutes and I've not even got into the worst part of this day. The fucking dross that we just had to endure. I'm so happy I didn't watch that second half. I don't care about any improvements. 3 nil. I was hearing, um, I can't remember what his name is, the guy who is the main pundit for, for Sky Sports. Arsenal have never gone, this is the first time Arsenal have scored three goals in the First half of a North London derby since 1965 or something like that. I can't remember, something stupid. It's never happened before. It has never happened before. Do you know what that means? We were in the relegation zone with, with Harry and Wande Ramos and we, didn't, we still didn't even concede three goals in one half. Yeah? <coughs> <coughs> we came here with AVB, no ideas, and we still didn't concede three goals in one half. In the first half, it's, it's done. Embarrassing. It's done, bro. It's, it's done. No, but it's done. That's what I'm saying. It's, for me, it's, it's past the point with the players we've got, with the with the background staff we've got, with the board we've got, the way we operate. It's, it's past the point of no return. Like you say, the game today is the one game where if you're struggling down at the bottom, you're losing games. This game's the outlier. This game doesn't matter. You get yourself up for this game. We've seen it so many times when we were struggling in in, in sort of mid table nowhereness, where we'd come to the Emirates or you know the Emirates actually so you know, a bad example to use. But the North London derby would be a mad game. We'd be up for it. We sort of play above the level that we were actually at. This, I mean, I'm I'm watching players, and again, like it's hard to pick out players today because there was not one man that deserved any sort of credit off the back of the day. Maybe Larice, but again. <laughs> Do you know what I mean, it's just he done nothing wrong, done nothing right, really. But I'm watching for the first goal our so-called Viking in Hoybia, and I, I back this guy up. Just terrible. Walk, it was walk, terrible. No, but no, but no, but just walking. When I see um, I can't even who Saka was it played the ball into Smith Rowe, but I'm watching him just stro stroll and and walk after him. The same from Undombele, the same with Delhi, the same. It was just it was just man for man. I, I mean, can you tell me? It's hard to say, you know, what, can you pick out a worse performance? Because we've lost 3-0 to Chelsea the week before, Palace the week before that. There are so many bad examples. Brighton away a couple of years ago. There's so many bad performances you could pick out. But for me, Bro. that like, honestly, it made me feel sick watching that first half. Like, I, even when we look, we, we've gone to the improvement with the back four and all this. Now nah, it's gone. But I told, at the same time, I did caveat that and said that we saw it with Jose when he first came in. 
we all went, oh, do you know what? The back four look okay, or it, blah, blah, blah. And it all comes crashing down because we've got the players that will just let you down time and time and time and time, mm. and, time and time and time again. Nothing's changed. And this is my point. And I said it on Twitter straight after the game. And I know we'll get into loads of other stuff. And I know mm. I'm going off on one, yeah? But my point is, cool, you know, cool for Nuno said, yeah, I get it. Do it, man. Because he's out of his depth. He's not good enough. I completely agree. I didn't want him in the first place. But we cannot keep fucking rinse and repeat in this cycle of losing games, losing big games like this and going, ah, it's jo- Jose out, it, Pochettino out, fucking Nuno out. It's not, bro, we'll go and appoint Potter. We'll go and appoint someone else. It won't change. We'll we'll have a little bounce back. We think, okay, yeah, we're doing okay. This will happen time and time and time and time again unless it changes from the top down. It's exhausting. Mm. It's exhausting. Mm. Especially for you. That's what I'm saying. I got offered a ticket. There was no way I was going to this game. I feel peak for you. It's dead. It's horrific. But unfortunately, you can go and appoint whoever the fuck you want. You can go and appoint Conte tomorrow. Yeah? It will happen again in, in four to six months, in 12 months, in 18 months, whenever it is, because we won't give the man what he needs. We won't give any manager the tools they need to, 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 to actually do the job. So it's pointless. It's a poison chalice. And that's what I was saying on Twitter again. Is There's a reason why we were left with Nuno in the first place. You can't moan for having Nuno when... We were turned down by by countless managers. We then, like you say, talk about Fonseca, where we had a manager that wanted to play progressive football, and then we turned him down because he wanted to play that way. So how can we think, moan about having Nuno? No, we did. We definitely can moan, but as I said, it's a it's a it's a beggars can't be choosers situation, unfortunately. Um, and I just want to read out this super chat from Izzy. Big up Izzy. Big up Tobes, a non deluded Spurs fan. Can't believe you lot were linked to Tommy All Window and didn't get him. What a player he is for us. I saw what's mad. I've, my mate Dan, who I who I live with, I remember one time I came back home and he was fuming that they had signed Tommy Asu. I said, I said, why are you angry? Like this guy, I, the little research I did on this guy when we were linked with him, he looks he looks a good player. Yeah, and he looks versatile as well. I'm like, seventeen million. That's a steal, bro. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I was saying we should sign this guy. We needed two centre backs. We should sign him and alongside Romero. I wanted like a ball player alongside yeah. Romero's sort of aggressiveness. Yeah. And yet he goes to Arsenal and he he has he's one of their be- easily one of their best players and had Son in his back pocket for most of the match. Mm-hmm. Well the first half anyway. I didn't really watch the second half for yeah. obvious reasons. But I just want to talk about this this lineup as well because Nuno made some comments Nuno made some comments um post match about how he he said something about how he had a game plan and he basically said he had a game plan and the players on the pitch were not the players that Ex- execute that. were necessary to execute that game plan. And he didn't go into detail but because he didn't obviously want to single out any players. Yeah. But I'm looking at this lineup and so he played Loris, Tanganga, Dyer, Sanchez and, and Regulon. So you play, so Tanganga coming in, yes, I think that's fine. There's no, that you'll never hear any issue with that. But Regulon, Regulon at left back again, the alternative is Ben Davies. But Regulon is, it, it, he's becoming a bit of a problem for Spurs in the sense that like he, it's far too easy for people to play against him. And this isn't me saying he's been bad this season, because um, I don't actually think he's been bad this season, but... I feel like defensively, it's so easy for him to to have he, these lapses, and for people to just to just go at him as well. I remember there was one time today, um, Tierney's put a ball into the box, and it's just a simple clearance from Regulon, and you give the ball straight back to to Saka, and it wasn't just him that was doing it today. Tanganga gave the ball a, away a lot, so many times today, and he's not good at all going forward. And then again, the centre back pairing. I don't know what the instruction was today, but all they kept doing was going long. It was like, give the ball to Hoybier, who would come so deep and then give it back to them and, and, and then they would go long. It just, it didn't make any sense to me. Like, San- neither are good passers of the ball. So, one, you're kicking it long to people who aren't really going to, apart from Kane, mm-hmm. who was shit today, and we'll get onto him in a second, Um you're kicking it along to people who aren't really going to win this ball in the air, especially on the right-hand side. Son is not going to beat Tommy Asu in the air. No, Son's not going to beat anyone in the air. Lucas Moura is not going to beat um, Gabriel in the air. 
and we're just going long, kicking it long, hoofing it long, and just getting ourselves into danger over and over again. Because when we go long, we're shit. When we play it short, we're shit again. What is the point of spending almost 50 million? Well, we haven't paid it yet, but we're going to do it. But what is the point in spending almost, committing to spend almost 50 million on a centre back if you can't play in the biggest game of your season? Mm-hmm. Sums up I, our I, recruitment. Sums up, sums, it sums the club up. I mean, I, I, go on. Sorry. Go, no, go on, go on. It just didn't make sense to me. No, but I think these these aren't new issues. And I agree with you. I think the issue you've got is how many signs we made, all of them are on the bench. So what's the point? In the big, like you say, one of the biggest games of the season, what's the point? And I don't want to hear about injuries and the fact that, you know, Sanchez and um, Romero were away and stuff like that. Dyer's been out for the last two games. Why is, why, is, why is he walking straight back in? It makes no sense. And like you said, with Regulon, I agree, but he's the kind of fullback which you're, would be good in a system when your defensive unit's strong. Your two centre-halves or three centre-halves, however you're going to play, are strong and your central defensive midfield, one or two of them is also strong and, and that unit works. When you're in, as I mentioned to you last week, when you've got a defensive unit that's under constant, constant pressure, he's not a fullback, which is going to be able to sort of dig in in those moments. He's, he, he, it's not going to work. Um, I, I, I don't even know what what to say with, with the lineup with the squad anymore because it's just, just you've been saying it, we've been saying it for weeks. Um, I'm not, I, bro, you go, bro. I, can't, I actually, I, I don't even know what to say yeah, anymore. No, Do you know what I'm saying? I, I, yeah, I can continue to be honest. The, the lineup is the lineup. I don't think there was, I, I Skip should have started today. Not that he would have made like a, a a, a huge difference because uh, to a man we were terrible but just in terms of executing the game plan that he wanted Skip should have started today Romero should have started today <coughs> like, I don't really get why Nuno is making obvious mistakes in the lineup it just doesn't make any sense to me and there is and we'll get onto the midfield in a second but there is this insistence on playing Dele deep and he's not good at it but we'll we'll get onto that in a second so I want to talk about the performance. So before I even continue with Spurs' performance, I actually just want to say Arsenal were fantastic. Mm-hmm. Like they were excellent. Excellent. Like yeah. they didn't put a foot wrong in the first half. Like Abamyang, just the other day, I was speaking to Turkish and Pippa about like what's going on with Abamyang and stuff like that. Today, he, I don't know what the, he must have ate like a billion <laughs> tensu beans because he, he gave. Yeah. Like he's he's beaten Sanchez in the foot race. Like he's pr- like today, I don't think we had. It felt like we didn't have time on the pitch at all in that first half. Mm-hmm. Sanchez was getting pressed to death by Oba. Dyer was getting pressed to death by Oba. Regulon getting pressed to death by Saka. Um, Tanganga getting pressed to death by Emil Smith Rowe. Like Arsenal to a man, what out of, out of possession they were excellent. Like they didn't let us play. And then when they got the ball, it was fluid. Yeah. And it's so yeah. strange. It's so strange because I've seen them many a times and they've not played like this. Um, they've not played like this under Arteta regularly. Like they don't play like this no. under Arteta regularly. But you know what it means? It means one, Arteta was able to 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 channel the importance of this fixture to his players, and two, his players, because I'm not gonna put it all down to Nuno, his players understood the importance. Mm-hmm. So they turned up today. Yeah. We, yeah. our fan base, talk about how we, me, I preach about how good Harry Kane is. He's better than Bamian because he is better than Bamian. But you just have to look at their performance, really. contrasting factors. Yeah. A Bamian worked his socks off today and dispatched that second goal on his weaker foot, bro. Mm-hmm. And it's like you're asking for, 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 for our players to put in the bare minimum. It's a derby, bro. This ain't even like. A, a, it's a fucking North London derby. At the very minimum, you have to bring it. You have to bring it today, bro. There is no halfway wishy-washy performance. If you don't play well, you're gonna drown. You're gonna sink in this fixture. Yeah, I mean, the, the, most... crowd gonna, the crowd are gonna get behind. The crowd are gonna get behind your back, and the players are gonna pam the hell out of you. Yeah, it's one of the most intense games you can play as a Spurs player. And if you ain't bringing that heat, you're gonna get smoked. Yeah. Yeah, but the most da- the most damage. I mean, how many times? I know it's the North London derby, but how many times have we spoken about this, like this, about this squad? Do you know what I mean? Like you said, there was you go through Arsenal's eleven, including the changes they may have made. There wasn't one man where you'd go, yeah, it wasn't at the races today, or didn't put the effort in, or just didn't have a good game. Look at Spurs' uh, team. 
you said a complete opposite. And then when they're throwing up stats, they're looking at, you know, even basic stats like distance covered, we're, we're bottom of the table in the league. And I've, the, the whole message we've been, we've been getting from, from the management and from the club is about the fitness which we didn't have under Jose. We're going to run more. We're going to press more. We've, we've seen the complete opposite, which tells you the players are not necessarily, I don't use the word disinterested, but I haven't bought into it. So when you don't have the quality and then you also don't have the players buying into it, that's a huge recipe for disaster. And I, I mean, how do you, how do you, how do you flip that on its head? The whole thing needs to be, the whole thing needs to be burnt, man. Right? It just needs to be scrapped, scattered. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, I think I felt in the first, I didn't, as I said, I can't comment in the second half. You can probably comment in the second half, but <laughs> first half performance, Arsenal were a 10 out of 10. Like every, yeah. in transition, they, this, they ruined us. Like one touch passing, not, no, no lay, lay, not delaying on the ball. Every single time they got the ball, they, they said, you know what? Fuck it. We're going to go at this team. Mm -hmm. Emil Smith throw. I told Turkish on our preview box box. I said, this guy was going to turn up today. I said it. Mm -hmm. I saw this guy in pre-season and he was the best player on the pitch. We won that game 1-0 and he was the best player on the pitch. I said, he's going to turn up because he gets it. He's a local lad. Yeah. yeah and he's got a point to prove. He's yeah. going to turn up. Of course. Of course. But you I expect had no, that. Bro, this is what I'm saying. I had I had no doubts whatsoever Arsenal were going to bring their A game today because they always do. It's a North London derby at home. They, they their, record, their record is so strong against us for a reason because it means that no matter what position they've been in, no matter what position we've been in, they always turn up at home against Spurs. Mm -hmm. Right, so because we it's a done fucking today. North London derby. It's what they're supposed to do. My doubt was whether we were going to bring it. So many players drowned last season. Hoybier was terrible last season, and Dom shocking last season. Kane minimal service last season. Mm -hmm. Rubbish. Regulon, awful last season, terrible. Matt Doherty, terrible. So many zero out of 10 performances last season. And it's like they've, they've gone and, and they've put in an even worse performance today. <laughs> I don't laugh or cry. Like, like yeah. bro, like, like, what, what? I'm, I'm literally trying to find my words to describe yeah. my disgust at that performance. And there are no words to describe it. Terrible. Terrible, 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 terrible performance. Awful, turgid, repulsive. Turgid. Good word. Good word. I'll take that. Performance. That's a word. I, I like that one. Turgid. Yeah, we'll go with that. Terrible three, performance. Three London derbies back to back. Nine goals conceded. Like, I, and I've got my notes here, but I keep deviating from my notes because the more I think about this game, the more it's getting me angry. Yeah. It's pissing me off. Mm. Kane as well. We need to talk about him. Mention it on the THFC. So mention it on the bigs. I've been mentioning it for weeks now. This guy is getting away with him. In fact, well, he's not yeah. even getting away with it because it's it's obvious. He is putting in zero out of 10 performances and just keeps going on with his days as if nothing's changed. Yeah. That's our own fault. We put ourselves in that position by not... Yeah, we have. But what, you, what, what can you expect? It's, as someone said it earlier... Enoch, Daniel Levy, whatever you want to blame it on, all of their chickens have come home to roost at the same time. I said to you last week, what was the point in keeping this man? There isn't one. I know, mm -hmm. I, I know the bids weren't what we wanted, but there was literally no point in keeping him if we weren't going to go and get some decent backups and other options across the squad and, 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 and at least try and compete. At least give us the illusion that you're trying to compete. Because what's the fucking point? Like you said, well, this is the North London derby, notoriously the game that Harry Kane is always up for, always scores in. This, I mean, I tried to say over the last few games that I don't think it's disinterest, maybe just getting up to speed, blah, blah, blah. No, this, man's dis, this man okay. is disinterested. This man okay. is disinterested. I'm looking at his face when he's missing chances, okay. when he's not, doesn't care. But I can't blame him for that. He, do you know what I mean? He's basically carried the side for the last five or six seasons. Like, what, what, can, you, what, what, what can we do? What can he do now? Because like, all he can do is, let's say he, he goes and scores another 25 goals this season. Where are we going to finish? So we're going to finish seventh. He's this tired. Was, I, I'm tired. It's done. Go on, sorry, bro. Read the comments. Yeah, this, no, this one was, was, was interesting as well because, like, he stupidly lost the ball. Like, he's lost the ball. And if there's one thing that Arsenal, as I said, one thing that Arsenal were relishing today, it was the opportunity to get at us in transition. Mm -hmm. our, defensive, our defensive shape in transition was terrible today. Like, we couldn't cope. Every single time they, every single time they were they were hitting us in transition, I felt they were going to score. Yeah. I felt they were going to score, I, and they even tested us like a, they tested us like two or three times before, twice before they even scored. scored. Yeah, 
Like it looked like every single time. Like, and the thing is, our press was non-existent today. It's a combination of them moving the ball much black. Like, as I said, one touch stuff. I saw the, the link up between Emma Smith Rowe and Aubameyang at times. Um, Odegaard, I felt like he had he had a good game today. Thomas Party, he didn't miss a beat. No, he didn't miss a beat today. Like he he was he was imperious in midfield. Like um, I feel like I feel like yeah, every single time we just turned over the ball, we were just sitting ducks waiting mm -hmm. to be waiting to be to be hunted at. Yeah, and yeah. It, I'll move on to so that's. Kane, I don't want to. I don't want to take my foot off his neck. Like, I, yeah, yeah. He need. <laughs> I, this is the problem. The guy is playing like a sack of shit, and is a disgrace, and needs to be dropped. But again, this board, in their infinite wisdom, have decided that they weren't going to buy a striker. <laughs> they weren't going to buy a striker, and now we can't drop him. Mm -hmm. And what makes it worse is not only can we not drop him, we're probably going to have to play him against this shit team on Thursday. Yep. At home. Mm -hmm. Because we've got no one else. Yep. How embarrassing is that? <laughs> think, think about it. Think about how, how like, if you're, if you're a businessman, which everyone tells me Danny Levy is. Seriously. Come on. Look at this. Where, where are we going to finish this year? So what, 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 what revenue are you going to get back from the squad or the, the football inside of things at all this year? Hardly anything. You're relying on Anthony Joshua versus you see. You're relying on these events to actually get 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 you extra revenue. But like, you, you fucked it yourself. I, I don't understand how people can sit there and say to me that he's a good businessman, because I I, I don't I don't I actually can't justify it. There's no there's no explanation for it. You've got one of the best strikers in the world at your football club. Doesn't want to be there, and like you say, I'm I'm saying he's disinterested. And I'm not saying for a second I think he's deliberately putting in zero out of 10 performances out of spite or anything like that. Like I said, we, care, no, but that's what I'm saying. We've all been at jobs where you don't want to be at a job and automatically your performance level and your desire to actually do anything there drops. Like what? You was expecting to force this man to stay. When I say force him to stay, like I said, I don't think we got a bid that was fair enough, but you you, you forced him to stay and then you what, you're expecting him to come back and just drop 10 out of 10 performances like it was week in, week out last year. Why would you expect? I, I, and, but then they're not signing anyone in case that, in case that, that, that didn't work out. Madness. You know what is? I don't even expect. I don't even expect a ten out of ten performance. But I expect better than what he's what, what he's given us. Like he is legitimately playing badly. Like even people may think of it as something small, but even losing the ball in such a compromising position for the third goal, like um, that's come on. You're better than that. Sloppy. You just give the ball away. And yes, commend him for for running back and trying to. Tackle back because, of course, he he did make the sliding block on Saka and was unfortunate mm -hmm. with the with the ricochet. But he lost the ball that led to that to that chance happening in the first place. And then on top of that, I heard that he missed the sitter in the second half as well. Is mm -hmm. that true? Yeah, yeah. 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 Missed the sitter in the second half as well. And this is now zero goals in five appearances. Like this is without a doubt the worst run of form that we've seen from Harry Kane in the Premier League in about six years. Yeah, it's three games. I think before this was three games. His biggest drought, I think it was. Um, like, it, but it's not even some... close. That's not. That's my point. Is whenever Kane's not scored or, or you know, he's not giving us the numbers, he's impacting the game. He's holding the ball up. He's bringing others into play. He's doing everything else spot on like he usually would. This is just different. Like you say, is it? He just doesn't care, and I can't blame him. I don't care anymore. Like, do you know what I'm saying? It's it, it's. How long can we keep going over the same things? Without it just yeah. becoming fucking tedious. Yeah, it's it's annoying. I, I, and the thing is, for all his for, for, for his for all the bullshit that he put us through today with another poor performance, mm. one chance this guy had in the whole game yeah. from what I'm hearing. Yeah. One chance. We ask him, we ask it's weird. We ask him, don't get deep, don't drop deep. Yeah, don't drop deep, stay up top. We need you in the box, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. But when he doesn't drop deep, our midfield don't want to build. No one wants to build. Even when we have Indom in this team, and I'm going to come onto him next and our midfield, we, we weren't trying to build today. So when he stays up top, he gets no service, gets minimal touches. And then when he stays deep, he gets touches, but he's still playing shit. <laughs> he's still playing shit, playing poorly. And we got no one in the box. Yeah. But it's just the realisation, going back to your point at the start of the started the show when you were saying I, I didn't understand why we kept going long or trying to hit Son, trying to hit Lucas, whatever. We saw it with, with Jose. I know, you know, for me, Jose is a, a 
a far better coach than Nuno, so he, he, he was more successful with it. But Jose very quickly realised that we can't progress through the midfield because we don't have the players. That situation hasn't changed. So Nuno, we tried it against Chelsea. Yes, it was better. We tried it um, against Wolves. Didn't work out properly. We, it, it didn't, it didn't. Um, but we don't have the quality to, to, to progress the ball up the pitch against pretty much anyone, bro. Yeah. So we have yeah. to try counter-attacking football, hitting it long, which is, again, which is where Kane's only chance came from, which was just a long ball over the top and Kane kind of created it himself. Um, what, what, that's what I'm saying. I don't think Nuno's right for the job, but what can you expect a manager to do? Yeah, I think, and a lot of people, I'm just going for some comments. So ming says, Tobes, my bro, Kane is trying his best. This is not bad. And no Spurs fan should hate Kane. I, I, I'm not sure no, where you've sorry. heard us say that we hate Kane. No. <laughs> criticizing a player for playing poorly does not mean you hate him it means that you're observing you're observing him play bad and you want him to play better we we are allowed to criticize harry kane he's not he's not superman no. he's playing badly and he he deserves criticism yeah and let's let's not get it twisted no one said like he is the problem at the club no one has ever said that but he's put in a, a string of performances which are subpar not just by his standard but in general so I will call them out like I have done and like Tobes has done for any players that, that put in this level of performance because he's done yeah. well for us in the past. doesn't give him an exemption for a string of six games, five, six games where he, he's done nothing. Because yeah. it impacts the team, it impacts the performances and it impacts the results. So we'll talk about it. 100. And, and I just want to zero in, I just want to zero in um, on... The, I think the key part of... Uh, like, our defence was bad today, and it's weird. All the little improvements I thought I saw gone away today. Like, mm. I didn't see any of that today. Um, I felt individually in 1v1 situations, we were weak, and I felt like as a unit, we were just bad. But I think our midfield is now the joint biggest hindrance, hindrance yeah. of yeah. this team, if not, if not the biggest hindrance. And again, <laughs> I hate referring to what I said, but I... In all the previews I mentioned last week, the big the midfield was a key thing for me. Can we win the midfield battle? Because that is literally becoming our uh, um, our Achilles heel now. Mm -hmm. I told Turkish the midfield battle is important. Last year we sank, we mm -hmm. sank, and we we can't afford to sink. Lisa, because if we sink, the game is done. Yeah, the midfield is the key. The midfield. The midfield are responsible for two things. The midfield are responsible for giving our defence the protection it needs and putting putting pressure on <coughs> Arsenal's midfielders when they have the ball. And then our midfielders, when they have the ball, their, their remit is to try and disrupt Arsenal's shape, like play through Arsenal, mm -hmm. play through them. And our midfield drowned today. Like, yeah. I already mentioned Arsenal's midfield. They were they were excellent. They were excellent to, to, to a man. All yeah. three of them, in fact, yeah, sorry, Xhaka, Emma smith -Rowe, even, yeah, Xhaka. Xhaka was, he was superb today. He, he was he good was, today, bro. He was superb. And, and I think on top of him being good, I think, again, we didn't put any pressure on this guy. No. And it's like, again, Arsenal were really good today, and yet we were so bad. Like, so bad. the midfield, I didn't get what was going on. Like, Hoybier, there was no midfield. There was literally no midfield. I think for the first, I think it might have been for the third goal or for the first goal, um, where there was literally no space. Like, I mean, there was bags of space, no no midfielder. Like, mm -hmm. Odegaard and Emerson Smith, uh, Odegaard drives the ball and there's literally nobody there tracking him. There's yeah. no midfield. Uh, Hoybier was either trying to come deep to get the ball from the centre-backs or just, all of, he was just being pulled everywhere, just chasing, chasing, chasing and not winning anything. Yeah. He didn't win yeah. Nish today. No. And then I didn't get Nuno. I didn't get what he was doing with Ali. We need to, to put this Ali midfield experiment to bed. To bed, yeah. We need to keep this an no, awful not experiment. experiment. Just, just, put, just put the player to bed. Put the player to bed. It's done. It's done. He is an awful. It's done. And people are going to say, oh, no, you're attacking Ali. No, because you're going to hear what I'm going to say on Indom next. I've spoken on yeah. Kieran. I've spoken on Hoybier because... I think Hoybier was probably even worse than Ali today. Hoybier was fucking awful today. He was terrible. Yeah. In and out of possession. He was rubbish today. Rubbish. And he is Mr. Reliable. He's the one that I thought, yeah, you could come in and you could rectify your, your errors from last from this fixture last season. But he was terrible. He was nowhere to be seen. He couldn't get close to Odegaard or Smith Rowe. He's been pammed at the Emirates again. 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 And then yeah. Ali. This is why Nuno, I think you. You have eyes. You are the manager. The guy is offering us no quality in midfield. He can't progress the ball. He can't tackle the ball. 
He no. can't drive with the ball. No. He literally can't do anything in that position because he's not good at it. And for me, it was like we, he was so detached from the midfield. He's basically playing as like a right winger at mm -hmm. certain points. You're crowding Lucas Moura's space and doing nothing with it. Mm. So more time, it was it was um, Odegaard, Xhaka and Party, and you've got only got you've essentially only got Hoybier when he was asked to be in the middle. In the middle, you had the two midfielders spread out wide, trying to trying to negate Arsenal's threat from 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 their fullbacks, but they they had no impact in the middle of the park where it was really important. Mm -hmm. And then even yeah. for the first goal as well, yeah, Hoybier and 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 um, and Dom literally just jogging. Joke, yeah. That, yeah, that, yeah, that killed me. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. That's what killed me. That's what killed me. And yeah, we can talk on Delhi as much as we can talk on Delhi. That you know, there's nothing we can say that can't be said. What or what hasn't already been said? Sorry. Um, what baffles me, and you're right. This experiment needs to be done. The player needs to be done at this club. Like you say, the best thing for him is just a new challenge somewhere else, man. Um, but even in Delhi's best parts of his career there was not one Spurs fan that ever said that he was good on the ball or he was a creative um in, in a sort of an Ericsson mold or a number 10 mold he was very good at late runs into the box instinctive finishing clever runs all that kind of stuff and he was aggressive he was never dictating the tempo of the game he was never a defensive midfielder he's never a ball carrier at any point so to try and now make him one especially when we don't have a strong midfield unit anyway, is baffling. It doesn't make sense. Like you say, our midfield has actually got weaker for me since last year, which I don't know how that's possible. Um, but the guy just needs... Like, we can go through the whole 11 today and, and, and talk about them in the same vein. Like I said, I don't want people to feel like I'm just singling out Ali. I've, I've been done with him for three years um, and I don't necessarily continue to blame him for that. He shouldn't be anywhere near this side. He shouldn't be picked. But it, it's... It, 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 it kind of tells you the situation we're in that we are picking them, the options that we have. Do you know what I mean? Uh, me and you both, uh, Tobes, have, have been crying out for Ndombele to start for, for weeks. And this is the reason why, not necessarily saying that we don't, but this is the reason why I, I've had the argument in the past that we need to stop clamouring for this guy to start because he gives you cameos and then lets you down like today and you see him walking around. And again, especially when you don't have a strong midfield unit in general, it's highlighted. Um, but I don't know what else to say on it, bro. It's so poor, man for man. The options we have are poor. Uh, the effort levels are poor. The quality is poor. Um, I, I, I don't know where else you go in terms of in terms of conversational topics around it, bro. Um, but yeah, I'll, I'll let I'll let you go off on one. Yeah, it's just the the experiment needs to die. Nuno is talking about you don't you're not he's not picking the right players to like, execute his game plan. Then stop picking them. I know this squad is shit, but from the players that you have available, there's a certain way you want to play. If you want to play a 4 3 3, play three central midfielders. Don't play a number 10. Yeah. And what's mad? I actually disagree. I felt in, in, in his prime, Ali was creative for Spurs in the final third. Not, not a play. I wouldn't look okay, Maybe not creative. Ali could create some chances. He could get, he could get assists. Yeah. Yeah, there's a big yeah. difference. There's a big difference. Getting assist doesn't mean you're creative. Yeah, so but I was saying dictate. Think. I was saying dictate the game. I said he was okay, never, no, he was never right. an on the ball footballer. He was never given the ball. He was never. Yeah. He was never someone who who could pull strings. No, that's not no. his mo. Never been his mo. So my thing is the, the the things that he did well in. So we've we're basically stripping that away from him, and we're basically making him do the things that he's never been good at. Pochettino tried this guy in central midfield years back and moved him out of there because he wasn't good enough. Nope. We had Dembele there. He was everything that Dele wishes he was in central midfield. Yeah, you could, you weren't good enough to do it. You weren't good enough to do the role. And yet we've now got him back there and we're, we're expecting some sort of renaissance. For what? Get rid of him. Mm -hmm. Just cl clinging on to players for no good. But we've spoken about Dele. Yeah, I felt he was lost at sea in that right mid role I felt like I felt like the spaces between our midfielders were too big yeah it was too big we should we I feel like our midfielders we we were scared of the threat out wide but I felt like we needed to have been narrow to try and put some pressure on Arsenal's midfield because that was what was killing us today yeah that was what was killing us today put some pressure on the guys that are finding the fullbacks you're worried about the fullbacks, fullbacks put some yeah. pressure on the guys that that keep consistently finding these fullbacks in space yeah Cut it we didn't want to do that yeah 
And then, um, yeah, so like Ali just, you're basically saying you're playing with 10 men. I mean, you're yeah. playing with two midfielders <laughs> if you're putting him in a 4-3-3. You may yeah. as well just say that. Yeah. And then I'm going to get onto Indom now. Yeah. This guy is a false prophet. Mm-hmm. Yep. And, and it's sad to say that. That me. pains you, innit? I, I it it that, pains, that pains me you. so much yeah. to say it because yeah. I, still rate, I still rate this guy and I'm rooting for him every day of the week to do his thing at Spurs. But as far as him dominating big matches is concerned, he's a false prophet. He's never done it consistently for Spurs. Yeah. I was looking for him to, to, to show me something today. This is the second North London derby now where, where he's gone away to this ground and he's hid. Last season, he got on the ball and was terrible. This season, he barely got on the ball. Yeah. Defensively, you were you were able, and in possession, every single time we tried to give it to him, he'd give it back to Dyer. He'd give it back to Hoybier. Bro, yeah. do something, bro. Yeah. You are in this team for your off-the-cuff brilliance. Do something. Mm-hmm. Bukayo Saka, every single time he got the ball, he was looking to commit. Emil Smith, for every single time he got the ball, he's looking to commit. And I know it's difficult to say this when Arsenal have retained their shape and they're asking us to break them down. But brother, brother, yeah. we've been clambering and clambering and clambering for your inclusion in this team. Mm-hmm. And this was the game where we needed you to justify why you should be starting week in, week out. And he's just embarrassed us again. He's embarrassed yeah. me. Yeah. Like, it's not it's not on, bro. You can't no. play like this and cost 60 million. You just can't. Not in a North London derby. What's the last big game where you'd say he's performed? Maybe the 6-1 United? Away? I don't even think he played well in that. I think he played well last week against Chelsea before he went off. I felt he no, was but no. more. Okay, and this is this is where I have the issue with him, and I agree. I agree with you to an extent. But well, that's just one half. Not even yes, but not even that. It's moments in the half which, if you put them together, you go, you've done three, four, five good things. But it's not even to the point where in between those three, four, five good things, he's ticking over and he's still doing a job. It's either he does something mad. Where he, he comes out of a tight space and plays a really you know a really good uh, ball forward through through the lines, and then he stops. It's not about maintaining a level or saying that you need to be doing these pieces of magic consistently, constantly throughout the game. But what happens is he does something mad, and then just stops, and then does something mad again, and then just stops. So there's no there's no balance to his performance. It's either fucking unreal or shit, and it fluctuates. So drastically for about 45 minutes, 60 minutes, 90 minutes, however long he plays, but there's no baseline decent performance of him. Do you know what I'm saying? You've never watched an Ondombele performance where you've gone, it was just a solid, good performance of him. It's either he's done something crazy or he's just dead. That's my nah, issue with him. You know what? I think I, I think I think I have, but again, it's not been like like I when that's, when that's, hold on. When I say it's like when I say a solid and don't like solid performance, I mean he actually controls the tempo of the game or the midfield for the for the, the most part of the game. I don't think that happens personally. You, may, you I think I, I think I've, I think I have seen him do that, but it's just unfortunately it's not been against like really good opposition. Like I remember both the Red Star games, I thought he was excellent for ninety minutes in both matches um, under Pochettino when we won four nil at away and five nil at home or whatever. But okay. I, my, well, my point, that. I can't remember the performance off the top of my head, but I'll take my, a word my, for that. But my point, and, and someone's in the comments saying Culture Kansas has been saying this. No, Culture Kansas has said that he doesn't know what Indom does. That's not what we're saying. What we're yeah. saying is that his impact is not lasting. And that's the yeah. been, that's been the biggest criticism for Indom Belly. Your, your impact is not maintained for 90 minutes. It's too yeah. haphazard. And today, there was no impact whatsoever. Mm. Again, in the first half, I can't speak for the second half. I didn't watch how he played in the second half, but I can't imagine it would have been anything better than the first half. No, we are rooting for you. I'm rooting for you, but he needs to meet up halfway. You cannot play like this in the biggest fixture in our calendar, bro. You can't play like this, but, but it's not on. You can't play like this in the North London derby, it just isn't on. But would you not argue that this is this is one of the issues? And we've done it with so I'm not, I'm not, it's actually not even focused just on Dom, but we've done it with so many players where we, we've known players don't want to be here. Do you know what I'm saying? And we keep them and then. Like how long can we keep saying that it's, it's you can't perform like this? You can't perform like this. We need better from you. The guy that is clearly there's been two windows now where he's kind of come out and said that he doesn't want to be here, or the rumors, just, you know, the reliable rumors are that he doesn't want to be here. Okay. Yeah, he doesn't want to be here. So, so what? So, so what? That's what I'm saying. As fans and as a club, why do we do that? We did it with Ericsson for a bit. We did it. With, do you know what I'm saying? Like, we, if a player doesn't want to be here, 
just just go. Same with Kane in my, especially now the way he's performing. Like it, it, it never works out. So I don't understand. Like I don't know where I'm going with this point, but that that's my point. Is like the guy has never put in a performance really, or like a string of performances where you go, yeah, this guy needs to be part of the project for the next five ten years. We all know he's got the talent, and that's why we're so disappointed that it's not worked out. But like, how long do we keep going for another season after this one? Another manager? I still like, keep it. I still keep the faith. I can't. But, but that's just because you've seen that technically he's better than pretty much anything we've got. Like he has more quality than, than 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 anything else. But like he doesn't actually deliver much more than any of the other midfielders either. Like when you're when we're talking about other players need to go. Like I, I, that's my issue with it. I think he's he does. Like, well, I think he does deliver more than the other midfielders. But I think he doesn't deliver enough. That's my issue. Yeah, but Today, that's my point. If he doesn't deliver enough, and he also says he doesn't want to be here, what are we doing? Do you know what I'm saying? That's my point. It's like we're just hanging on to it because we all want to see what we know technically he's capable of. But some players just don't have either at this club or the mentality for it or whatever. But like I say, this is not just aimed at him. We've seen it with so many different examples. Um, <coughs> I feel like... No, go on. That's my point. It's like I, I want him to succeed more than anybody else. But he's been here for, what, over two seasons now? Like this is my point. Like, what do we? How long do we give players before we ship them out? We did it with Lamella for fucking eight years. Do you know what I'm saying? I'm not saying yeah. they're comparable in terms of quality. Right. My point is that's what kind of what we do is we kind of wait for them to come back in the side, and it's a cycle. Like, let's say Undom puts in five disaster classes in the next three, five weeks, we'll all be saying on Twitter, well, not me or you, but you know what I'm saying. The narrative will be, I oh, put the cells in because you know. No, blah, blah, blah. No, and, no, and, never, never, but but never. this is the cycle, and then that'll happen. No, it is a cycle, but it won't but, be. But, for me, but, but you get but you get what I'm saying. I get what you're saying, but I I just think I think the difference is I don't think Lacelso can do it. I don't think he's good enough. Oh, and, no, Dom, no. and Dom can do it. Mm. He's just not, and it, it, it frustrates it frustrates the life out of me. Today mm. was 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 probably more unique than most because in addition to him not playing well today, he actually hid. Normally, like I know him for wanting the ball and trying things and losing the ball. He hid today. Yeah. He didn't want to do anything whatsoever with the ball that was positive. I, apart from playing one good crossroad pass to Lucas Mora in the first half, he hid. Someone mm -hmm. keeps saying in the comment, lads, so in Dom wasn't the problem though. Have you, either you've just joined the stream now yeah. or you're just saying stuff just to say stuff. Nobody is saying that in Dom Belay is the problem. We are literally analysing the whole team. We've analysed the defence. We've analysed the midfield. Please just chill. We've criticised Hoybier, who's probably the worst performer in our midfield today. We've come for Harry he Kane, bro. Like, what more do you he want? Is not, he, is not the, he is not the problem as well. Exactly. He's been our most consistent midfielder, and we've criticised the hell out of him. Please relax. We're talking through the whole team. When a team loses 3-1, nobody gets off scot free. No. You know, North London derby, nobody. Yeah? Please. Let's just chill. We're analysing everyone fairly. And Indom deserves criticism. He was terrible today. He was terrible today. Someone's saying he's trying in the second half. I didn't watch the second half, so I wouldn't know. I wouldn't know. But he didn't play well today. Um, anyway, let me just go through some super chats. Yeah, um, okay. Big ups, uh, Crocodox, Crocodox. Sorry, I'm not pro Nuno, but our reputation is so bad, I don't know who will touch the job. Potter won't come. We'll see us as a damn great. I highly doubt Graham Potter will see Spurs as a downgrade from, from, from Brighton. I highly doubt that. But listen, we're, we're in the mud. The fact that we even had Nuno in the first place after mm. a billion gazillion managers, we're in the mud. We're in the mud. <laughs> um, big Steve, big six tomorrow. Yeah, I'm I'm dead. I'm toast. I'll be there. I'll be there. I don't hide. I don't Show hide like I'm in Kildas. I don't hide like I'm in Kildas. So it, it, it's cool. So we've analysed we've analyzed the midfield. It was always going to win us and, and lose us this game alongside the, the defence. Yeah. Um, Nuno, mm. my last point. Where do we go from here now? Because if you speak out on this guy, you're called negative, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. Um, he, is, he is up against it. Yeah. Because this board sacked Pochettino after a string of poor results over in 2019. Mm -hmm. This board sacked Jose Mourinho. Yeah. This board sacked Martin Yo at half time in a Europa League game yeah. and in a UEFA Cup game. Wow. Yeah. The pressure is building on Nuno. Whether you like him, whether you hate him, the yeah. pressure is building. This is three successive defeats without even scoring a single goal against all of the, the, the London clubs. 
we have a goal difference of minus six. Yeah. If he doesn't turn this around soon, he is his head. In fact, we all know it. He's going to get sacked. Yeah. Managers always get sacked. Nuno yeah. is going, Nuno is not going to last the full term of his contract at Spurs. I can promise nah. you that. Yeah. I'll put money on that. Yeah. I can promise you that Nuno is not going to last his contract at all. It's just a case of whether he can stem the tide. Yeah. Because, bruv, it's not... We, we've spoken about the issues of the board. The board overarching, they're the overarching problem. Yeah. The players are shit. Yeah. But the manager... Uh -huh. <laughs> uh -huh. The manager, it's the manager's job to make this team better. And I'm yeah. sorry... I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm so, so sorry. The, the, the squad, yes, we know it's not good. Mm. But there are teams with worse squads that play better and are more positive. There are. There okay, are. Okay, yeah. Uh, okay, yeah. I mean, it's still, yeah, you kind of know my narrative on this. Yeah. So what, what would you, you tell me, what would you do now? Do you give him what? Till Christmas? Do you say Bro, are you, are you, we're gonna have to give him we're gonna have to give him time? It doesn't make sense sacking him now. That 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 that's that's I didn't want the guy in the job, but like he's here now and he deserves time to turn it around. Like it, it but he is in pro he's 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 in problems. This isn't me saying this, this is the club. Yeah, no, I agree. He's okay, in so, problems. so so how long how, how, how long do you think he gets then? It depends on the results. It, it it's all dependent on results. Loses if to Villa next weekend. Keeper, what's that? Loses to Villa as well next weekend. If he loses to Villa next weekend, then bruv, his head, his head's on the chopping block. Yeah, his head's on the chopping block. Pochettino, in his autobiography, was telling you in his first season, he was telling you how close he was to getting the sack. Yeah, it was a game away. Yeah, yeah. If he didn't win that Villa game, who knows what could have happened? Mm -hmm. And and we played Villa when? When did we play Villa that season? We played them in what, like late October? Yeah, early I was say November. November. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So what I'm saying now is not Toby's opinion. It's facts. Mm. No, you know who's got three Premier League games on the spin, conceding three goals. Oh, bro, I know that. My, my point was... No, I'm, no, 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 I'm not talking, I'm not talking yeah, about you, but yes, I'm, saying, yes. I'm saying if results if results don't change, if you don't see an upturn in form over the next month or two, his job is seriously at risk. Yeah. After waiting 72 days to appoint him as well, you know. That's... that's so, but this, this this is this is the issue, bro. That's why that's what my I was what I was trying to phrase my question as, and I get you were saying it well, Miguel. The way I was trying to phrase your question is, yeah, that's what we can expect to happen because we've seen the pattern of how the board behave. But me and you have both sat here and said that he wasn't the right man for the job in the first place. There are overarching issues, which you've always said. So what would you do? Is what I'm saying. Like, would you get him out now? No, I wouldn't. You've you've made your decision. Stand by it and give him the give him the time. You've made your decision. Stand by it and give him the time to try and turn it around. If he doesn't turn it around. Done. Get rid. No, I agree. I agree. Get the rid. issue, that, as I've said to you before multiple times, the issue for me, there is an issue with the manager. There is an issue with the squad. Hundred. But the issue is, but the issue is not them. If that makes sense. Yeah, it's it's weird. It's like it's like like I liken his appointment to like to like Rafa Benitez at Real Madrid, yeah. Ronald Koeman at Barcelona. Yeah, these guys they're not bad managers. Rafa Benitez is not a bad manager at all. Mm. This guy won the La Liga with... Didn't he win La Liga with Valencia? You tell me. Yeah, I'm pretty sure he did. I'm pretty sure he did. Won the Champions League with Liverpool. Um, yeah. Ronald, Co Ronald Koeman, he was doing his thing with the Netherlands before he got the Barca job. Like, it's not that these guys are bad managers, but they, they've they've taken jobs and accepted jobs that are clearly too big for them. Mm. Rafa Benitez was never going to work at Real Madrid because he's not their style of manager. No. Real Madrid demand a front-footed manager, bro. Yeah. yeah. Barcelona demand demand a more fluid style of play. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Nuno at Spurs, our fans, and I'm not saying I'm not saying that we have the best fans and stuff in the world, but after watching the football that we watched with Jose Mourinho and seeing where it took us, we obviously needed to try something different. Yeah. And if you're just going to offer us much of the same with, with the same crop of players that this stupid board have failed to, 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 to move on and replace with newer players, you're going to land yourself in the same problems. Yeah, completely agree. But that's negligence from the board. Again, that decision has been taken by the board. That's my point in the sense of there's a reason why we ended up with Nuno in the first place. That was my whole point. Along. The manager is not the right man for the job, but there's a reason why that manager is in the job. Yeah, big up deluded as well in the, in the chat saying Nuno can't work with these sort of guys. He is the guy for underdogs. It's just 
listen, it, I can't argue that. I can't argue that. Like he's not, he's not, he was he never should have got the job in the first place. And now yeah. I, I actually, in a way, I sort of feel sorry for him, but he doesn't help himself when you're doing dumb, dumb things like playing Ali in central midfielder, getting a new center back and not <laughs> playing him, not playing him in such a huge game when you're when you've already lost two games on the spin, three nil. Like to, today, it was obvious Skip had to start. The guy has his best game in the Spurs shirt for us this this season against Wolves, and you drop him for Arsenal. Yeah, and he's a local lad as well. Yeah, yeah. Right. As, again, like Deluded said, and like you said at the start, like Nuno is not the problem. Same way Jose Nuno is a problem. Jose he's a was problem. a problem. Yes. Kane was a problem. Dele is a problem. They are not the problem. <laughs> the problem. Yeah. The problem is the people who keep making these fucking decisions. Decisions. There you go. <laughs> there you go. And this is all I ever try and say, but I get shouted at for going, I'm overreacting. I'm negative. I'm everything. Okay, cool. But then we can all enjoy this for the rest of our lives. This is all nice, man. It's all good. That is the class. Yeah. That's a scene. Anyway, yeah, it's just, it's dread. It's dread. Um, I just wanted to say as well, like, oh, I'm trying to remember. I said, I've got a ticket for this game on Sun on Thursday, but before everyone, anyone... Uh, chops my head off. It's not because of North London Derby. I was never planning to go because I got stuff going on on Thursday. But I will be giving away my ticket for free. If you're a Spurs fan and you want to go to this game on Thursday, yeah, against I think the name. What's their names? Ennis Mura. Sorry, yeah, Mura. Yeah, Mura. Sorry, yeah. Yeah, Ennis Mura. Um, just let me know. Just, just DM me. DM me. Um, I'll pick. I'll pick someone randomly. Um, but 315 of you in here, make sure you have smashed a like, make sure you subscribe to the channel if you've never subscribed before. Make sure you turn post notifications on. There's going to be many, many more videos like this coming up this season. Hopefully not this fucking result, although I know there are definitely Arsenal fans watching this and reveling in this. So, yeah, it, it's, it's, it's a sad state of affairs and Nuno, time is ticking. Time is ticking. Like you got to turn this around, and this isn't coming from me. This is coming from <laughs> Daniel Levy. That that, that egghead. He's yeah. gonna attack your ass if you don't turn it around, brother. Tick tack, tick tack, tick tack, <laughs> tick tack. <laughs> and my last, the very very last thing I want to say. So I put out a tweet today, and, and I said the next person who calls me toxic, negative, or whatever when I speak out on, on this team, I'm gonna slap you. I can't do it on Twitter. But I will slap you in real life. <laughs> you say to my face, I'm being toxic. I'm a <laughs> and I will backhand you. You're not a real spout. You're not, you're not a real fan, bro. <laughs> I'll backhand you. <laughs> because uh, there's no way on earth you, non Spurs fans can see it. So I don't really get why Spurs fans can't see it. Yeah. Like, there's no way you can watch this, even with the state of us, of, of our team, etc., etc., and be happy with this. There's no way. Trust the process, bro. It's all good. There's just no way. But anyway, as I said, smash the like, drop some comments if you want to drop some comments. Thank you for the super chats. Thank you for your time. Have a great Sunday evening. Arsenal were excellent. Spurs were shocking. Um, and we'll be back. We'll be back during the week. Take care.